Samurai. It's the last movie review of the year on the last day of the year because next week is going to be Kevin's week of top ten so that way he can avoid talking about shitty-ass January movies. All right, so let's cue title scene. Birdman is a 2014 dramatic comedy that has been getting attention for months. I am serious. I have been trying to get to this movie since October. And in fact, originally I thought this was like an adaptation of the Hanna-Barbera cartoon Birdman, but it isn't. I'm actually shocked. Why aren't there more Hanna-Barbera cartoon um, movies? Oh, that's why. So, but moving on, again, happy to still get to see this movie. So either way, I'm going in knowing everything that I'm hearing. It's one of the best movies of the year, one of the most original films of all time, all that good stuff. And I gotta say, it did not disappoint. Go see this movie, people. Don't let Annie win! But let's start off with our premise. The film picks up with Michael Keaton, who's a washed-up, down-and-out actor, who was never able to get past the stardom of playing a famous superhero. That accidentally resulted in him quitting after the director got switched because the, one of his characters bit a guy's nose off. Oh wait, that's what actually happened to Michael Keaton, not what happened to his character. But essentially, it is the reason why Michael Keaton gets so into this role. He plays pretty much this... You know, he's not a likable guy. The thing is, is that you sympathize with him, and you get him, and you do understand how this is like Michael Keaton in real life, but this is clearly not Michael Keaton. This guy is a jerk, and he proves that throughout the movie. He's not very nice. Even his reasons for doing this is kind of selfish when it boils down to it. Essentially, what he wants to do is he wants to reinvigorate his career by reviving a Broadway play, starring and directing in it. And basically, that's the movie. It basically just follows him as he tries to revigorate his career as he tries to figure out who he is again, because this movie asks a lot of interesting questions. When it comes to the movie industry, have block, big blockbusters taken over? Is that all that worth it? Is there art in them? Is there not? Do movie critics just spend all their time bantering and trying to make themselves famous? Um, do your fans, do they matter? Is it okay to just be an actor who just wants to do fun, big, adventurous movies? It asks all these questions, and what is so great, what makes this movie so amazing, is that it never answers any of them. It never says what anyone in this movie is doing is right or wrong. It is simply a movie that says, these are people, this is what they do, and these are the issues that they are dealing with and we deal with in real life. We're constantly in the movie industry today asking the questions, when does the big summer blockbusters have to stop? Is that all that matters anymore? Hell, they even reference a lot of those references to Iron Man, the Avengers, hints at, you know, Batman, all that good stuff. And that's why this movie is so perfect, because it really just tells everything. It's not about preaching anything to you. It's not about making you think a certain way. It is simply saying, this is where we are, and this is how people are dealing with it. And I love that, when a film can do that without really getting preachy and forcing something down your throat. But that's not where it ends. I don't think there was a bad performance in this movie. You've heard it before. Michael Keaton's getting the Oscar for this picture. I am sure of it. Edward Norton plays another actor. This guy's kind of like the opposite to Michael Keaton's character. He is the big star, but he's obsessed with it. He loves the limelight. He really is, in a way, a less conceited but more selfish version of Keaton. At least that's how I interpret it. Emma Stone plays Keaton's daughter. She's excellent and amazing and connectable and always incredibly sexy. Zach Galifianakis, even Zach Galifianakis, a guy who keeps doing dumb comedies, is amazing in this movie. There wasn't a bad performance in this film, and it's all backed up by this amazing cinematography. The whole movie looks like it's one continuous shot. Now, obviously, there has to be cuts. There needs to be. There's no way that, obviously, there's set changes, there's time changes, all this stuff. But the way everything is angled and the way the camera moves, it makes it all feel like one, like I said, continuous shot. Because of this, you constantly feel like you're in the scene. Some people say it's like a play. Other people make it feel like the film's really happening. All this stuff really just encapsulates you and puts you in the movie. The other big thing that really fascinated me was the score. The score is just drums, like whiplash-level drum work. And that also helps, too, because it makes things feel very basic, very primal. There's a lot of questioning, is Michael Keaton sane? Is stuff actually happening in the movie, or is he just going nuts? The film does all this and always makes sure to present it to you in the way that 
This is just for this character. This is what's happening. You are getting a brief window into the lives of these weirdos and losers, and you're watching it all unfold while it asks you questions about your life. Now, you may not like this movie. It's understandable. It does have a very acquired taste sense to it. And also, I'm not going to lie, the film maybe goes on a little bit longer than it needed to. But overall, I thought the experience of watching this movie was amazing. I loved the way it brought up questions it wanted you to talk about. It's a movie where even if you don't like it, you will be talking about it for days. And I probably will. It's going to really annoy things at my New Year's Eve party tonight. But there's no way else to say it. Birdman ends! 10 out of 10! That's right. Ending the year off on this amazing, great, fascinating film. It's been an amazing year for movies and film. And like I said, stick around next week as we do my week to avoid January movies with a bunch of top 10 lists for the year. And what were your tops of the year? It's the end of 2014. What was your favorite thing about 2014? Rather, it was movies, TV, food, uh, naked ladies on the internet, anything you want. And as always, click to like and click to subscribe. And Happy New Year!